Hello, welcome to Sonography Radiology Training Channel. This series of videos is radiology findings in fractures and dislocations of the shoulder. This is the second video in this video series about heel socks defect. What is the definition of heel socks defect? Heel socks defects are a posterolateral humeral head depression fracture resulting from the impaction with the anterior glonoid rim and indicative of an anterior glonohumeral dislocation. It's often associated with a bank cord lesion of the glenoid. Repeat dislocations lead to larger defects which can result in an engaging heel flux defect which engages the anterior glenoid when the shoulder is abducted and externally rotated. This is an example of heel sox lesion which is obliquely oriented in neutral view. When the shoulder is abducted and externally rotated position, margins of heel sox lesion and anterior galenoid are parallel, which predisposes to engagement. This is another image of non-engaging heel socks lesion. In comparison with previous image, we can see here that heel socks lesion is vertically oriented on neutral view, and when shoulder is abducted and externally rotated position, margins of heel socks lesions are diagonal to anterior galenoid, which decreases chains of engagement. What is the pathology of heel socks defect? Anterior glenohumeral dislocation will lead to the impaction of the posterolateral humeral head and anterior glenoid rim. Repeat dislocations can lead to further bony defects in both the humeral head and glenoid, and the engaging heel socks defect is associated with decreased glenoid bone stock, glenoid rim fracture, and chronic instability. Band cord lesions are up to 11 times more common in patients with a heel socks defect, with increasing incidence when, when we have increasing in size of defect. What is the radiographic features of heel socks defect? When a heel socks defect is identified, careful assessment of the anterior galenoid should be undertaken to assess for a bank cord lesion. The features in plain radiograph include wedge shaped defect in the posterolateral aspect of the humeral head, which was appreciated on AP internal rotation view, but smaller defects can be difficult to identify in plain radiography. In CT and MRI, we can see loss of the normal circular shape in the posterolateral margin of the superior humeral head on axial images. Of course, MRI and CT will show smaller defects in comparison with plain radiography. Anatomic shape can be preserved, but the presence of bone marrow edema in the posterolateral humeral head indicates an acute injury or heel socks lesion. Normal flattening of the posterolateral humeral head caudal to the level of the coracoid should not be misinterpreted as a heel socks defect, which sometimes termed a pseudo heel socks defect. Is there any variance for heel socks defect? Yes. Paradoxically, a heel socks lesion may sometimes appear as an osteophyte like protuberance rather than a depression on radiographs, probably due to the fact that the X ray beam in those cases tangent to the elevated margin adjacent to the depressed area. This is an example of variant of heel sox lesion on the frontal view in neutral position in the form of an osteophyte like protuberance. 
but with a descending beam in relation to this pointing we can see the large depressed heel socks lesion here is there any differential diagnosis for a heel socks defect yes any deformity of the bone contours at the posterior superior aspect of the humeral head should not be considered a heel socks lesion Actually, there are important inter-individual variations in the normal osseous contours at the head-neck junction, but the aspect is usually symmetrical to the asymptomatic side and the similar radiographic projections. These are two examples of inter-individual variability of the normal bony contours at the head-neck junction of the humeral head in radiography and sonography. These two images are an example of variant with marked depression and these two ones shows variant with a smooth shallow depression. Another differential diagnosis on abduction internal rotation views, the physiological depression at the humeral head-neck junction should not be mistaken for heel socks defect which is evident 2 cm below the superior humeral head margin. Another differential diagnosis is synovial inclusion cyst, which are extremely frequent, especially at the bare area of the posterior aspect of the humeral head. On the articular surface of the humeral head is a posteriorly bare area located between the posterior insertion of joint capsule and synovial membrane and the adjacent articular cartilage. The cyst most likely result from hyperpression friction between the bone and its capsule synovial environment or from passage of synovial fluid into the bone. In this orthogram of a 44-year-old male with no rotator cuff or lateral pathology, this pre-orthogram sagittal T2 facet spinico demonstrating collection of intraosseous cysts within the posterior greater tuberosity or bare area. Corresponding post orthogram sagittal T1 with fat saturation with intra-articular gadolinium showing extension of gadolinium into the cyst confirming communication with the joint space. Synovial cysts are distinct from heel socks lesions by their location on the anatomical neck rather than on the humeral head and by their more lateral topography. Another differential diagnosis is marginal erosions associated with inflammatory erosive arthropathies are also located on the anatomical neck just as synovial inclusion cysts. Another differential diagnosis is abnormalities associated with the common mechanical encephalopathies can also lead to irregularities or even focal deformities of the humeral head but are located on the greater tubercle. This is an example of irregular osseous erosion of the superolateral humeral head at the site of supraspinatus tendon insertion, consistent with hatchet-shaped deformity or hatchet sign due to emphasitis in enclosing spondylitis. And finally, it is to be kept in mind that certain fractures of greater tubercle can also be associated with shoulder dislocation following in some cases the impact of the galanoid on metaphyseal epiphyseal junction of the humerus. Also pay attention to these practical points. In patients with a heel socks defect but without an anterior lateral tear or slap tear, particular attention should be made to assessing for potential humeral avulsion of the glonohumeral ligament or Hagel lesion. In Hagel lesion, the inferior glonohumeral ligament avulses from the inferior humeral neck. But the Hagel lesion itself needs a separate video for complete explanation. Now I suggest two others of my videos that are close to this video in terms of matter. 
Thank you for your attention.